Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is set actor relative location? First of all, let me show you this working, and then we're gonna go over explaining it. So we have a filing cabinet, and it has a drawer. That drawer, after two seconds, is simply going to go in. The relative location of that drawer, so the location of that drawer relative to the parent, which is going to be the cabinet, sort of, which we'll see in a second, is being changed every tick using a timeline. It's basically moving it smoothly. Let's look at how this is set up, and then we can understand what I mean by sort of. So this is our set actor relative location node. Let me go ahead and unplug it. And this is our default setting. We're going to take in a target, which is going to be an actor, a location, which is a vector, and then sweeping and teleporting. Now here's where this one gets a little bit different. Now we have set world location nodes. So for example, we can set the world location of any of these items. And you can see them setting the world location. We have, you know, actor location nodes. And right now we're working on the set actor location. So we have the set actor location node right here. And if you notice, these are pretty much the same. They both take in a target. They both take in a location, sweeping and teleporting, and we have output results. The difference here is this one is relative to the parent. The root component of the actor specified relative location. <clears throat> now you might be thinking to yourself, well, an actor's root is going to be the world itself. Well, that's not always the case. If you were to do the set, active rel set actor relative location, and let's say I didn't plug anything in. Let's go ahead and split this. Let's go ahead and plug in this to our, I want to say it was the X. And then we'll go ahead and run it. And we'll watch what happens to the item. It's going to go to our origin point and it's going to set it relative to our origin point. Because it's going to be relative to its root, which is going to, or its parent technically, which is 0, 0, 0. And then it's going to go ahead and set it relative to that. And if we were to set the actor location node, that's the result we'd expect. However, the relative version does have a use if you are doing it on other actors that are attached to other actors. In this case, when I hit play and I plugged in my drawer, you'll notice the drawer itself closes. Well, this is pretty simple. I've used the spawn actor to spawn in a drawer, and I've set it as a variable called attached drawer. And then I've gone ahead and attached the drawer I spawned in. Now the drawer is pretty simple. It's just an, a blueprint with a cube on it, sized to fit, to make it look like a drawer. I've gone ahead and attached that drawer as a component to the drawer root point on my cabinet. So if we were to take and let me go ahead and go back to uh, this one, right? <clears throat> yeah. Let's open up my widget that spawns this in. So this is going to be the uh, this is the set actor relative location. Let's find that node, shall we? Set actor relative location. Here we go. This is the node we're working in, right? Set actor relative location. Yep. Let me adjust this to be more something like seven seconds. That way we have a little bit of time to show you. Let me hit play. Now if we look over here, we're going to pause this. We're going to see the file cabinet, which is our parent blueprint. And we have under it another blueprint, the drawer that I created and attached to it. And you'll notice it has a location of zero, zero, zero even though the file cabinet has a location of whatever, whatever, whatever. Again, just like any other parent-child relationship, it has its own set of transforms. Its own set of transforms are set here for the location. Therefore, it's zero, zero, zero. So when I tell it to resume and play and move its location, you see that it changes to negative 80 relative to its parent that lets it slide in. So that's pretty much it. The Note that I can't find again. Here we go. Wait, where did I hide that note? Here we go. This note, set actor relative location, really has a specified use when you're setting it relative to another actor. 
if you don't have it as an attached component, like we do in this example, or even an attached actor, if it's not attached, its parent is going to be the world. So you can use this node in place of the set world location node, and it's gonna work the same thing. The difference being is if you actually have this as a child of another actor, then it's gonna actually work relative because it's now a child and the world is no longer its parent, and it's gonna be relative to its parent. Just like our other setter nodes, we have sweeping and teleporting. They work the same. Teleporting disables physics, so feel free to use it if you want something to not look crazy when it's moving from one position to another. For example, teleporting a character from one place to another, you may wish to enable teleport, so hair, which may be using physics, or other items that dangle and use physics will no longer react wildly. Sweeping allows us to check for collisions and overlapping when we're moving from one location to the other. So if we have sweeping turned on, we're gonna get a hit result. It's also going to physically block it if needed. So this is useful if you need to move something from one place to another, but you don't want it to be stopped. For example, you want your player to be able to block something, but you're using a set instead of physics to move. You'd use the sweep and it's gonna basically prevent the movement. That's it, that's gonna wrap up our set actor relative location node. Remember, it's going to take in a vector and a target. The target is an actor and you can sweep and teleport to disable physics as well as to enable collisions.